Hello, and welcome to another episode of the Seasonal Tokens Podcast, where Polar interviews people so you can do more investing and less gambling. What are the most common mistakes that you have seen that crypto projects have done that has led to their favor? There are many factors. Let me start with the easy one. The easy one is wrong timing. A lot of projects, if they don't come at the right time, because at the end of the day, it's all about investor mindset, right? If the market is down, no matter how good your product is, they are not ready to open up their wallets and invest. So I would say market timing is extremely, extremely important. Okay. So in other words, don't go against the wave. That's one. But I would say the common mistake which I fi find among entrepreneurs is they are all trying to copy the business idea which has done extremely well. For example, till last year, everyone was coming out with their own gaming project. And when I look at the founders, the founders have got nothing to do with gaming. They have never even played a game in their entire life, right? And they are now founders of a gaming project. So in, in the sense, to me, it's like a cash grab. Yeah. So please don't copy just because somebody else is doing it. And the third thing I would say is lack of application. There are, I would say 90% of the projects out there which have promised the moon, but I'm not talking about the price, forget the price, I'm talking about the application, the utility, there is zero application of that token. So I feel these are the three things, which is the common mistake. Of course, there are a lot, but these are the three big things which I look at. Okay. Okay. Great point. So we just talked about the favor, but at the same time, we know that there is one thing that is very common in the crypto and also in the NFT space. And it is very sad that I suppose that we're going to see this a lot more months, probably years. And these are the rug pulls. So how do you think people can reduce the risk of investing in potential rug pulls? Every project founder have to be KYC, have to be KYB. If they rug pull, they should be exposed. There is no other way. Otherwise, rug pulls will continue because they know they can get away. If you make two, three, ten projects, you reveal their founders, their names, right? What will happen? Others will will either run away because they know that there's no way to get easy money. And if they get it and if they run, they will be exposed, right? I think that's very important. This project failure is a different issue. You, you, you started the project, you did everything to make the project successful and the business fail. That's understandable. Business failures is part and parcel of, of an enterprise, right? But rug pull scams, frauds have to be exposed. So I think that is the missing element right now because a lot of people say, oh, crypto startups, high risk, high return wrong. I think the web two space was a little bit more secured from a rug pull point of view than the web three space. So I think that's the, that is the difference because I was in the dot com boom phase also. And now I'm in the crypto boom space also. And the difference which I see is in the web two space during this, during my days in Silicon Valley, every single startup, you knew the startup entrepreneur more or less, but in the web three space, People are just raising money over a Zoom call. People have no idea where these founders are. We don't even know whether the person who's presenting is actually the founder or the person who's presenting is fronting the founder or, front, or fronting the project. And then a lot of them will outsource the entire, as this was happening a lot in the gaming, they would outsource the entire gaming to a studio. And once they raise the money, either the studio <laughs> The studio will say, I'm sorry, we had told you we'll do this project for, let's say, for example, 100 grand. But now I'm sorry, we'll charge you 1 million. 
<laughs> so they are the mercy of the studio. <laughs> so the founders are like, what the hell? Forget it. Who wants to do it? You know, we'll just kind of take the money and say goodbye. <laughs> Yeah, it happens from from time to time. You are absolutely right about it. When agencies or other outsourced companies see the money, the potential of the project, they just want a, a bigger piece of it and say like, we want not 100, but 1 million, like you just said. But for example, the, the company has just raised 2 million, for example, and uh, agency, they don't want just 100,000. They, they want more. They want 2 millions, right? Which I don't think is fair because in the end, they will make much more, but in the long term. But some of the people from, from this agency, for example, the owners probably become greedy and this ruins everything. And we have seen this many times so far. But you are absolutely right that KYC is somehow a solution for that. But I'm sorry to say that we still see projects with KYC that work poor people and after that you can't find the owners. So I believe that also something that can help with, with the work pools are the companies that do the KYC. I think that there are a lot of them that they just don't care about it. They just don't care if the project will do a rug pull or not. They just want to, to get the money. And if the project rug pulls, then they don't do anything about it. So maybe it is not only the KYC, but also the companies that do this KYC. There are so many projects, like you said, that you can invest in. And there are so many things that we have to look for. But I know that there are some places where you can go and you can make your job easier. Places where someone has done some sort of filtering for you. So this can reduce the time that you have to spend and also the energy to research a project. So where do you think people can find the best possible investment opportunities that are somehow filtered? I think you're talking about projects that are, that are planning to do their initial fundraise, right? You're not talking about secondary that are already listed, right? You're talking about first time. Yeah, pre-launch investments. Correct, correct. Okay, so... If that's the case, then I suggest if you want to kind of play it safe, then go for reputable launch pads. Because what they do is they want to make sure that their community is given projects which are reputable. So they do a lot of due diligence and they also have some kind of uh, insurance. Like with the recent market crash and the rug pull, they want to make sure that the price of the token is above the IDO price. Otherwise, the projects don't get the, the money which is fundraised from the public. So I, I suggest go for IDO. The other is IEO, Initial Exchange Offering. A lot of exchanges do offerings on the exchange. That's also another, I would say, relatively safe compared to you just buying the project tokens from the project website. Now, that's, I would say, the highest risk but unfortunately, there's some downside to this as well. The downside is when you go to a launch pad or an IEO, the problem is they expect you to have their launch pad tokens. They expect you to have their exchange tokens if you do an IEO. And it's the same with NFTs also. Now, NFTs is, is, is of course, the most highest risk because you're just mostly buying, you know, JPEGs or gaming, I would say, avatars and hoping that that game will do well or that NFT will do well. So that's like the real highest, highest risk. So again, over there, I would suggest go and buy it through a INO launchpad because they would have also done a huge amount of, I would say, due diligence. So I would say these are the easiest and the, and the much preferred way instead of you just jumping in and you know going and buying directly on the project website or if it's nft you're minting on the website of the project yeah yeah great great suggestions i definitely agree with you and i wanted to ask you about that because we both know that 
the, the biggest opportunity to make the most is actually to invest in a project that uh, is in a pre-launch phase. But at the same time, it is also a very risky investment. But at the same time, if you want higher gains, you have to put high risk right. So the whole crypto space is risky. <laughs> so please come with that mindset. If you don't have that mindset, I would suggest go to equities, which is also risk. But compared to crypto, it's in, in relatively it is less riskier, but it's still risky compared to other instruments like, for example, bank fixed deposits or even real estate, for example. I, I agree with you. But like we said, if we want higher gains, you have to put higher risk, right? 